Welcome to JSA TV and JSA Podcasts, the newsroom for telecom and data center professionals. I'm jean Max Lim, and joining me today is Derek Webster, CEO and owner of data center advisory and consulting firm Anget. Um, Derek, welcome to JSA, and um, how's things with you? We haven't spoken in a while. <laughs> well, these are very in, in, interesting times, um, and the market's moving in slightly different ways, and yeah, COVID has had its impact, and I think the data center world and the ICT world is um, up for a little bit more love and appreciation now, so um, uh, a, silver, a silver lining from a, a terrible, terrible situation. Situation. Well, we do got to look at the positives um, of this nightmare, mm. uh, and I guess one of them is critical infrastructure. Data centers being recognised um, as critical infrastructure. Um, but one thing that has also changed a lot, and I don't know if COVID has had that much impact on that or not, because this was already kind of happening before COVID, is the investor profile within the data center space. Um, I guess in the old days it was much more concentrated around the big hyperscalers and colocation operators. But now we are seeing it's private equity, it's hedge funds, um, it's funds of funds. It's um, mm. a whole different monopoly of investors and people coming into this sector. Um, mm. How is the data center investor profile changing today? Yes, I mean, um, that's a very, very good opener there. I mean, at the moment, if you look at data center spend for product, it's now roughly 50-50 split between the hyperscalers buying 50% of everything. Uh, cloud, co, colo, telco, and enterprise, um, the other 50%. But behind that, um, you're seeing um, private equity companies that wouldn't normally be in the, in the data center space now approaching the uh, market. I think part of the reason for that is uh, the traditional sectors, if you look at the, in the, the investment sector as a pie, the data, the data center sector was always a small slice of that pie, but existing well-founded sectors aren't producing the traditional returns now. So private equity companies and the like are looking for what sectors are doing well. So the, da the data center sector since the dot-com crash has have now built up quite a good track record as being attractive hotels pre-COVID and senior living, for example, have, have all shown to be small slices of those pies um, returning big investment. So there is a drive for these funds to get more out of the stock that, that they hold and the track record that the data center industry is beginning to um, show. And even with the hyperscalers now, you're, you are now seeing them being seen as foreign direct investors. So private equity may be coming into play, family office, mergers and acquisitions, even debt funders now uh, are beginning to look at the data center space as in um, a, re a real estate land buy to shell and core build. Now we're going back to the dot-com boom times where banks would lend, um, but stopping at the most expensive part, the um, fitting out works. So that's very much a, a change. I'm also seeing special purpose vehicles um, approaching myself, looking at where's the value add here? Because everybody's got a piece of the land that is great, right? Um, oh. That could be a data center space and it ends up being a real estate play until you look into where the value proposition is and you look at, no, it's an investment proposition. It's not a real estate pro proposition. So, uh, yes, uh, those are the changes that I've seen in answer to your question. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> No, I mean, I, I think what you say is very interesting, especially the different vehicles of acquisition and investment. Um, and I mean, this is a sector that at the end of the day, it's trading with a with an editor of 20, 25, 30 time multiples, um, yes. which is massive, um, especially when you compare it to other the verticals. Um, and then especially with COVID, then when you start comparing it to other wider verticals, then I guess the difference will be even more. Um, and then I think the land acquisition real estate aspect of it as well. Um, that's very interesting because you do see this trend of a lot of acquisitions now um, of just pieces of land, not even businesses, but just pieces of land 
to really get that real estate to be able to build for demand in the next decade and beyond. Mm. Um, and then a whole different conversation will be what technologies are coming um, that's going to disrupt yes. the whole thing and that we're not going to actually need to build massive facilities and then all this land will go. But we'll talk about that in five years' time. <laughs> but, <laughs> but carrying on with the, 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 the investor conversation. But Derek, um, you are, of course, very involved with the industry on a lot of different fronts, um, especially the investment front. Give us a sense of what you and NGET, NGET um, are up to at the moment and where the focus is for the next year or so um, in terms yep. of industry work. Okay, so, so I'm not going to say who I'm working with or what I'm working on now. So uh, there's a lot of NDAs. Yeah, yeah. And they, some are really heavy too, um, like they'll take <laughs> your house away. Um, but uh, which you never really sign those, but you get the message of they're, they're very, very he heavy. But in terms of what I've recently been worked on, let's have a look at that. So one fascinating project was a, a very large global enterprise um, who were looking at their 15-year data center strategy, and their board had to agree to a 15-year strategy. And part of the task that I had was, is this buy, build, or lease? Yeah, buy, build, lease. Mm -hmm. And they showed me their data. They showed me their IoT data, their power usage, their information, number crunching data. And I was staggered because my advice to them was very fast. You're, you're going to be web scale in five years by 2020 standards. Hmm. So um, you're a global enterprise that will be building web scale. Therefore, my advice is to build, is to colo for the networks build your own and what it showed was perhaps a new class of customer a new class of data center segment which is the global enterprise company who will be building at such scale that they'll be building for themselves so that was absolutely fast and fascinating lots of special purpose vehicles looking at i have a great piece of land so i'm doing a lot of value prop propositions with uh, special purpose vehicles to have they really got something that has a value against thousands that could be um have been doing some countryside search selection for foreign direct investors who like that undercover you know keep the client hidden mm. uh, myself being that front that front end um, and um, also had advising uh, uh, boards and private equity funds too. Um, so yes, I have been advising private equity co um, companies on uh, what investments they should be looking at and advising them on what targets they are looking at, just giving them some advice. So that's what's just gone. Um, in terms of the future, I think probably more, more, more of the same um, with an added more green element um, and looking at the data center industry as a real estate deal, a digital infrastructure deal of, and a power deal and where the M&A and the sell off is. Hmm. OK, well. You, you leave me with a lot of questions that I know I won't get an answer <laughs> for. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, I think it's no surprise to anyone that the sector is going to continue to see this massive consolidation wave um, and the tremendous amount of cash being poured into it um, as the world just becomes digital, really. I mean, it's as simple as that, really. We all live on a digital planet at the moment. So, yeah. um, And Eric, if people want to get to know more, if they want to reach out to you, how can they find out more? Um, LinkedIn's a really good start. It doesn't show everything that we've done for confidentiality, but I just hope it gives a flavor. So uh, I would just advise people to look us up on, link, on LinkedIn. Okay, that sounds good. Well, Derek, I could carry on talking to you for ages because <laughs> every time we talk, there's always a lot of good insight coming out and a lot of new things I always learn. Um, I think we're going to have to keep that for part two at some point. <laughs> um, but thank you so much for accepting the invitation to come on, on, on the show. Um, and thank you, our viewers, as well, for tuning into JSA TV and JSA podcasts. And don't forget to check our social media channels for more content. Until next time, happy networking.